Greetings, gardeners. Boy, oh boy. When you hear people in the town of Hilo talking about how much rain has been falling, you know that it's been wet. Um, all of Hawaii, top to bottom, all the islands have been exceptionally wet. Um, we have to go back 29 and 30 years to be able to find a February that was as wet as the one we just went through. And uh, March is looking the same. Uh, so far, uh, this would be the 14th day of the month. We have had 12 consistent days of rain. So uh, most of the month so far, the rain has been falling nonstop. Uh, we're at 45 inches for the year so far. Uh, two and a half months and 45 inches of rain. So it's been wet. Makes it difficult to do a lot of things. Um, you know, I've been spending an awful lot of my time in the studio working on Grateful Dead music. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes if I gets a lot like Minnesota, you know, where the weather will just drive you indoors. There's only so much rain a guy can take. Um, out in the nursery, things are growing fine. I don't have to water. This is great news. But um, on the other hand, things are looking a little bit pale because all this rain leaches the fertilizer out of the pots. So it's going to cost me a fertilizer bill. Um, mostly this is the time of year where uh, folks, no matter where you are, you really should have those pepper and eggplant seeds planted if you're planning to uh, uh, grow them in your garden this summer. Um, I've been working on making sure i got plenty of pepper and eggplants out here. I could have started mine a little earlier, but I was busy with pigs and other projects. So they're popping up, and I've been doing some transplanting, anything that keeps me out of the weather. So I spend a lot of time back there in the garden shed, um, putting soil in flats, dropping seeds in the holes. Uh, been battling the cardinals, who when I plant a whole plant of sweet corn or a whole plant of pigeon peas or a flat of roselle, they'll um, promptly come in and go ahead and rip every seed out of the pot before it even germinates a lot of times. Drives me nuts, and uh, so I've had to put up cardinal defense around here. I'd like to find the guy who thought that these suckers had to come from the Midwest over to the island. That always surprised me uh, that anybody bothered with that. So, uh, yeah, we got cardinal problems. Pig problems are pretty much over. We've snared several and one got run over. Got the fences tightened up. Uh, next week's going to cost me a good bundle to put in brand new fences in places. Uh, where they were getting in. I'm tired of this. So we're going about that. Hopefully it won't be raining all the next week so the guys can work with the fencing easier. Um, definitely was good timing. Uh, the farm store in Hilo Dells has 15% uh, off on Monday the 19th. So but it needs wire posts, you know, chickens, whatever it is you might need from the farm store. It's a good time between noon and 6. I'll be there, standing in line with the rest of you, holding my credit card. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you know there's been a few interesting developments, I guess, around here. The, the Probably the most exciting one is the uh, kabocha pumpkin. Uh, I had tried for several years planting squash varieties that I used while living in the mainland, and they were pretty much a disaster. Um, the, the, because we have two bugs here, uh, one called the pickle worm, the other one called the melon worm, and whereas, yes, by using pheromones, I can trap these things to some extent, but they are nasty and uh, aggressive, and they make it really, really difficult to grow almost any kind of a cucurbit right here in Mountain View, unless you got the thing under screens. Well, you know, they need pollination. So the last time I planted a bunch of watermelons and I had beautiful, beautiful plants, I said, okay, I'm going to take the floating row cover off so the bees can get to the watermelon flowers one week. Boom, the whole work's dead. Melon worms. Oh. So I was up in Hamakua at a friend's place, uh, Hillary, uh, who raises the uh, Cloud Forest Coffee uh, up the coast here. And she had squash all over the place, and she's offering me these squash, you know, and I had seen this type before. It's common here in Hawaii. They refer to it as the kabocha pumpkin. Um, it doesn't really look like a pumpkin or a kabocha. 
Uh, I'm not exactly sure what its origin is. The closest I've ever seen are uh, some of the Mexican squash. Some of the tropical stuff from, from Central America does resemble this. They're kind of diverse, you know, they're from tan to greenish or striped. Uh, some look more like pumpkins, some look more like squashes. Uh, it, it's a, it's an odd plant. I don't know what its history is. It's been around here for a long time, and you'll see it in the farmer's market. Anyway, she gave me some squash. I brought it home. I cooked it, and I said, oh, man, this is really, really good squash. Yep, probably the best I have ever tasted. That's quite a statement. Um, so I said, well, I'll give her a try. If Hillary could grow this thing, maybe I can too. So I planted seeds out, and sure enough, the squash took off, started vining all over, and the melon and the pickle worms can't get into the stems. That was the biggest problem with the other squash. They'd bore right in the stem, the worm would go in there, and it'd kill off, you know, 6 foot, 12 foot of vine, just die past where the worm went in. Well, in this case, this particular squash has a stem it must be either very, very hard or somewhat repellent. I'm not sure which, but they, they can't damage the stems. Plus, the squash has the ability to send down brand new roots at almost every leaf node. So that one plant can develop a hundred root systems easily, making it very resistant to this kind of attack from bugs. I do see damage in the leaves from these worms, but that's just not enough to stop it. And um, Anyway, we picked a harvest. Uh, I was really pleased with it. The quality of the squash was just as good as the ones I got from Hillary. And um, the plant just seemed to refuse to go away. I mean, I'm going to call this the Godzilla kabocha because you can't stop this monster because it reroots at every node. It seems like it clones itself as it goes along, and it's becoming a perennial out here in the garden. Now, and I wouldn't want to thought too much about that in Hawaii. A lot of things will linger on here, you know, pepper plants, tomatoes that don't necessarily, you know, there's no frost, so things can go on for a while. So, the main spot where I planted the squash during the summer had come up all weedy. Oh, I had grasses and ferns and stuff. I didn't get around to cultivating it. We picked out the squash and I said, well, simplest solution here, I'm going to unfurl some weed block over the top of this. So I went ahead and I took a great big old square of weed block, I threw it over the top of the whole squash patch, and uh, I let the, the uh, plants die underneath the weed block to clean the ground up. Seemed a lot simpler than trying to cultivate or do something. I don't really till here because tillage is evil in this climate. Soil moves too fast when you make it that fine, so we like to keep it full of roots, organic matter, trash, and things that hold it in place. Uh, so I don't till. Uh, about two months went by, and I'm walking around out in the garden with Ellen. We're looking at stuff, and Ellen goes, you know, why is that weed block sticking up like tents a foot and a half in the air? So, oh, gosh, I don't know. It must be the stems of some weed, you know, that's dead, and it's holding it up. But, well, let's look. Well, so we went over there, and we both lifted up the tarp, and oh, my God, I could not believe what I saw. The underside of the tarp was full of cave squash. <laughs> All the weeds had died in two months. There was not a weed left in the patch. The soil was perfectly clean, but the squash had not died. This squash was pale looking, you know, like I say, cave squash. But it was underneath the tarp, still perfectly alive, and in fact, even opening flowers in the dark. Oh, oh, golly, man, what am I looking at? Well, I realized that the reason it was happening was that the squash, because it reroots the nodes, it was the stuff under the tarp was still connected to squash that was extending beyond the tarp, and it was rooted. And so that squash was feeding back to the other squash underneath the tarp so they didn't die. Well, I said, okay, cool, you know, it's like they give you a lemon or whatever, you make lemonade. I pulled the tarp back off, sure enough, three days later, squash all greened up. A week later, flowers popping up everywhere. You know, we're two weeks past now when I pulled the tarp off and still almost no weeds in the squash patch and it's starting to take off and fine out again. 
Hi, this is the Godzilla Squash. Um, its only name here is Kabocha Pumpkin, which is, I don't know, a strange name because it really isn't either. Uh, listen, I'm going to take a walk over here with an umbrella in the rain. I want to show you the cave squash after a couple of weeks back in the sun. Okay. okay, so right here I still have one little bit of weed block left that has the squash underneath it, pushing it up um, right there. You can see it's a little bit of vine stuck its head out of a hole in the weed black. Right over here by the orange tree, there's a little crept out, and here I got a little bit that came out from underneath. Over here, that entire area was completely covered with weed black. And the squash, it whereas it got pale, it did not die. Now there is still a little Wainaku grass left in there because like the squash, the Wainaku grass uh, roots itself as it goes and there's uh, underground stems connecting it. So I have a little bit of weed that didn't die. Otherwise, all the rest of the weeds are dead in there. Uh, there are some flowers in here even with the rain today. And we're going back around for another crop of squash off the original planting. The amazing Kabocha pumpkin. I'm going to rename it the Godzilla pumpkin personally, um, but amazing stuff, just amazing stuff. Unfortunately, it is a slow and tropical plant. This is, it does not come around to flowering and fruiting very fast, and it appears to be very long-lived. So I don't think it's going to make much of a candidate for the mainland. It might work in Florida. It probably works in Southern California. Um, and I could put some seeds up, I guess, uh, for this thing, because I have some. But yeah, I, I don't believe that it's going to uh, uh, do well in most states. Um, I did have a squash something like it one time out of a Mexican collection um, that, that I tried to grow in the Midwest, and it was a failure. It just took too long to come around to flowering. So. But here in Hawaii, it is the success story against the pickle worms. Yahoo! Cabbages doing good. Got a couple of plantings. There's a younger one over there. Uh, I've been picking the heck out of the, uh, the Toscana kale, the dinosaur kale. Good stuff here. Nice and mild. Grows really good. Um, and I'm doing better with carrots this year. The nematodes did not destroy these. We'll see. What kind of a crop I get but it looks like I might manage to get some carrots this year last year I planted the seeds directly into the soil the nematodes devoured the seedlings before they got a chance to take off this year I cut a four inch groove in the soil filled it with clean potting soil put the seeds in it and uh, the seeds took off and got rooted and growing before the nematodes could destroy them. Now it's a question of how badly they will deform the roots. We'll find out. But I do have them up and growing, so that's a good start. If you haven't got those onion seeds, eggplant seeds, and pepper seeds in the ground in your greenhouse yet, it's time to do it. Uh, go for it. Let's get that spring garden started. Spring's coming real quick now, even though it doesn't seem like it. I'm going to make a weather prediction, and I made this one actually earlier in the year, and when I saw snow on Mauna Kea in October, I decided that the mainland was probably going to get nailed this winter with some awful storms, and that winter would be fairly long, so I didn't need Punxsutawney Phil there, the uh, Punxsutawney Phil, the groundhog, to do this. Uh, the mountain behind me over here tells me you know, what the weather's going to be. And uh, uh, it turns out that was correct, and right now we're getting an equatorial flow. The air is coming up off the equator from the south. Things here are warming up nicely, and that's good because it's been really cold. Um, but that flow is heading straight into the west coast. You guys are going to get it again. There's going to be something coming across the U.S. Winter is not over, and it's still time to plant seeds. Aloha, happy gardening. Thank